Hi everybody, this is Chuck Minty. Welcome to my channel. First of all, before we get started, please subscribe, please like, and please share this video and all of my videos. I am trying to grow this as fast as I can and it's been a long process so far. I was walking on the beach pondering the French influence on Vietnam. The Catholic Church came to mind. I wandered around Da Nang and shot a ton of video on many of the Catholic churches here and was just overwhelmed at how many there are. And to keep this video to a reasonable length, I used only a few, open Google Maps and frame it around Da Nang and search on Catholic Church. There are a whole bunch of them. I'm including a few here in the beginning. This text below was generated by ChatGPT and some of it is mine. This time, I think it did a reasonable job describing the French being here. Keep in mind, I am not an academic. First of all, Let's ask chat about the influence the French had on architecture in Vietnam, and here it is. French architecture had a significant influence on the built environment in Vietnam during the French colonial period, which lasted from the mid 19th century until the mid 20th century. During this time, French architects and urban planners introduced a range of architectural styles and building techniques to Vietnam, including beaux arts, art deco, and modernism. Many public buildings, such as government offices, post offices, and universities were designed in the French colonial style, which typically featured grand entrances, high ceilings, and ornate decoration. French architects also introduced new construction techniques, such as reinforced concrete and steel framing, which allowed for taller and more structurally sound buildings. This can be seen in the many high-rise buildings that were constructed in major Vietnamese cities like Hanoi and Saigon during the colonial period. In addition to the direct influence on building design and construction, the French also had an impact on urban planning in Vietnam. They introduced the concept of the rue or street, which replaced the traditional Vietnamese alleyways and created a new grid system for city planning. Overall, the French influence on architecture in Vietnam can still be seen today in many of the historic buildings and urban areas of major Vietnamese cities. The French influence in Vietnam is a complex and multifaceted topic that spans several centuries. From the arrival of French missionaries in the 17th century to the French colonial period in the 19th and 20th centuries, the French left an indelible mark on Vietnam's history, culture, politics, and economy. The arrival of French missionaries in Vietnam in the 17th century marked the beginning of French involvement in the country. The Jesuits, in particular, established themselves in the country and spread Christianity among the Vietnamese. The Jesuits also played a significant role in introducing Western education and culture to the Vietnamese elite which would later have an impact on the country's modernization and intellectual development. Perhaps the most influential Christian proselytizer was Alexander de Rhodes, a Jesuit priest who spent 16 years in Vietnam and in the mid-1600s codified the Vietnamese language into what is used today, words written in the Latin alphabet with diacritical notations. His main dictionary was published in Rome in 1661. There is a good wiki article on him, Alexandra de Rhodes. He rattled around Hanoi and Hue, and both sides accused him of spying for the other. He was condemned to death, but his sentence was lowered to exile. Maybe Jesus saved him, but you know, he died anyway. However, it was not until the 19th century that French influence in Vietnam began to expand significantly. In 1858, France launched a military expedition from their base in China to Vietnam, which quickly led to the establishment of French Indochina. Over the next several decades, France would exert control over Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos, imposing their language, culture, and institutions on the people of these countries. One of the most significant impacts of French colonialism on Vietnam was the transformation of its economy. The French established a modern infrastructure system, including railways, ports, and roads, which facilitated the movement of goods and people. They also introduced cash crops, such as rubber, coffee, and tea, which boosted the country's agricultural output and exports. However, this also led to the displacement of traditional farming practices 
and the exploitation of Vietnamese labor. The French also had a significant impact on Vietnam's political and social structures. They established a system of indirect rule whereby local elites were co-opted into French administration while the French maintained overall control. As a side note, the French did this in Western Africa too. They gave the good jobs to the elite locals who ran the countries for them. In Vietnam, this led to the emergence of a class of intellectuals and bureaucrats who were exposed to French ideas and values, such as democracy, nationalism, and secularism. However, the French colonial regime was also characterized by authoritarianism, repression, and exploitation. The Vietnamese people were subjected to forced labor, land expropriation, and taxation, leading to widespread poverty and inequality. The French also suppressed Vietnamese culture and language, imposing their own on the country and limiting access to Viet education and social mobility for the Vietnamese people. The French influence on Vietnamese culture is also significant. French architecture, cuisine, and fashion have all left a lasting imprint on the country. French colonial buildings can still be seen in cities such as Hanoi, Saigon, and Da Nang, while French-style cafes and restaurants are popular with locals and tourists alike. The French also introduced the concept of hot couture to Vietnam, and Vietnamese women adopted French fashion styles and trends. Vietnamese artists and intellectuals were also exposed to French art, literature, and philosophy, and many embraced these influences in their work. For example, the painter Win Ya Chi incorporated elements of both traditional Vietnamese and French modernist styles in his art, creating a unique blend of the two. The writer Win Hui Thiep also drew on both Vietnamese and French literary traditions in his works, which often explored themes of identity, culture, and politics. The French influence on Vietnam's political and social structures also had a lasting legacy. The emergence of a class of Vietnamese intellectuals and bureaucrats who were exposed to French ideas and values laid the groundwork for the country's modernization and democratization. Many of these intellectuals went on to play a prominent role in the Vietnamese independence movement, which eventually led to the country's liberation from French colonialism in 1954. And that's a topic worth diving into. Graham Greene's The Quiet American is a nice place to start. That was set in the early 50s in Saigon. However, the legacy of French colonialism in Vietnam is complex and contested. While the French introduced modern infrastructure and technology, to the country, they also exploited and oppressed the Vietnamese people, leading to widespread poverty, inequality, and suffering. The French imposed their language, culture, and institutions on Vietnam, suppressing Vietnamese culture and limiting access to education and social mobility for the Vietnamese people. The legacy of French colonialism in Vietnam is still felt today, with ongoing debates about its impact on the country's economy, society, and politics. While some argue that French influence helped modernize and develop Vietnam, others argue that it perpetuated imperialism and a legacy of exploitation and injustice. Ultimately, the legacy of French colonialism in Vietnam is a reminder of the complexities of colonialism and its lasting impact on both colonizer and the colonized. During the period of French colonization of Vietnam, the French education system had a significant influence on the Vietnamese education system particularly at the primary level. At the time, primary education in Vietnam was not compulsory, and only a small percentage of the population had access to education. The French colonial government sought to expand access to education and so established a system of primary schools that followed the French model. In these schools, Vietnamese children were taught in French and received a broad education in subjects such as French language, math, science, history, and geography. The curriculum was designed to instill French values and culture, and so subjects such as literature and music were also included. The teaching methods used in these schools were heavily influenced by the French education system, which placed a strong emphasis on academic rigor and the mastery of key concepts. Vietnamese students were expected to learn through rote memorization and were often subjected to harsh discipline if they failed to meet academic standards. While access to education expanded, the system was designed to serve the interests of the French colonial government and to instill French values and culture and culture in Vietnamese students. I have heard or read somewhere that the Vietnamese school system is still modeled 
on the French system. If you have any learned input regarding this, please comment below. Thanks, I would appreciate that. Something else I'd like to touch on that may be related to the French being here, or perhaps the Americans being here, is that Vietnam feels progressive. Even if the single party system is quite conservative and traditional conservative values are the norm, it is conservative, but sometimes it just feels really progressive. It is also well-educated. The Vietnamese drive SUVs and wear Patagonia. They are yuppies like we are yuppies, at least the educated ones are. I've noticed in Vietnam Cupid, all of the women who live in Hanoi have master's degrees. The average education level in Washington, D.C. is a master's degree also. Perhaps that is a function of a nation's capital. The Viets build huge, tall, beautiful hotels and cover them with pixels so they can entertain the onlookers with spectacular whimsy. I love that about Vietnam. I love that about Da Nang. There is gigantic, spectacular whimsy all over the place. They design beautiful and amazing functional bridges and complex intersections that are works of art. Jump on your moto, go explore. You know, Da Nang isn't perfect. It has problems, some of which it can control and some of which it cannot, such as the current air masses blowing up from the south that are bringing dangerous levels of particulate matter. But I have never felt freer, freer from fear of encroaching monthly bills, free from gas prices, free from GMOs. And I mentioned this in my last video, I just love the motorbike culture. Talking about freedom is having a motorbike to bop around on. When do you arrive? Come on. Okay, everybody. Hugs and kisses from Da Nang. See you in the next one.